Going down the highway, wheeling right along Hear the tires humming, humming out a song The rumble of the diesel, the shifting of the gears The rhythm when he's rolling is music to his ears Cannonball! time of day when the rig is ready he'll be on his way he'll carry any cargo he'll go anywhere name the destination and brother he'll be there accomplished. See you in the morning, Harry. No, you don't. Go buy your own, you skin flint. Huh. Look who's talking. By now you used to have enough loot stashed away to buy a candy factory. Me? Oh, you must be talking about Michael Patrick Malone, not me. He's got Butch on a paper route, and Ginny's working at a five and dime on Saturdays. And just this morning I hear she's going to be working afternoons too. Sure, he'll be splitting the stock pretty soon. Three for one. Rockefeller Malone Limited. Come on, comedian. You think I'm kidding? Imagine a girl 16 working Saturdays and afternoons. It was her idea. Sure, with a little prodding by you. Go ahead, Jenny, work. Earn a lot of money and I won't have to pay you an allowance. Listen, wise guy, you want me to tell you why Jenny's working? Ah, skip it. Come on, here. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, honey. You just getting in from school? No, the store. Enter, wage earner. Hi, Mary. Well, everybody at once. Hi, Hello, honey. Hello, dear. Oh, you look tired, Jenny. I am. But I'll be fine as soon as I take a shower. Oh, before you go up, dear, I, I want to talk to you. You too, Mike. What about me? <laughs> You're excused. Well, thank you kindly, because I've got to change bowling tonight. Is, uh, anything wrong? Yes. Jenny, you take your coat off. We'll be in the kitchen. Hi, Butch. Hi, Pop. Butch, I'm going to set the table in there in a minute. I want you to clear all that stuff out of there. And why you can't do your homework in your room, I'll never know. The desk upstairs is too small. Complain, complain. This. History C, English C, Physics D, Latin D, Math C minus. Well, uh, what happened, baby? I don't know. I very simple. Just look at her. She's too tired to do her homework properly. Oh, Mother, I do my homework. Your marks don't show it. Sit down. Jenny, your mother and I agreed to this after-school job on one condition. That you keep up with your schoolwork. I haven't done that. I want you to quit the job. But, Daddy, I need 17 more dollars to get the watch. I can't quit now. Dear, I've had strong doubts about that watch idea from the beginning. Now, Jerry wouldn't want you to give him such an expensive birthday gift. He would, too. Virginia, no more arguments. Forget about the job. Forget about the watch. Jerry would be just as happy with a tie or a carton of cigarettes. Hi, Butcherino. Where's everybody? In the kitchen. There's a big fat argument. And Ginny's on the hot seat. About what? It's about you. Me? Yep. Ginny's 
been working after school so she could buy a watch for your birthday. But Pop says she's got to quit on account of she's getting bad marks in school. Hey, don't say I told you. I heard about the watch. Oh, no. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. Hold on, Francis. I'm glad Butch told me. I don't want a watch. I don't need one. The one I've got keeps perfect time. <sighs> but... No, no, don't give me any buts. And as for birthday presents, you're present enough for me just being here. Understood? Well, that's settled. Honey, what's for dinner? I'm hungry. Oh, my goodness, I've hardly got it started. Now, Scat, everybody out of the kitchen. Ginny, you get washed, dear, and then help set the table. Princess, I want you to know. The watch business and all. It's just about the nicest thing anybody ever wanted to do for me. Take your time, honey, and I'll, I'll set the table for you. his sister's friend. You should hear her when she talks to them. That is, when she deigns to do so. What do you mean? I mean that for the past few weeks, one by one, she's been cutting herself off from all her friends. Why? Why would she do that? Well, I suppose for the same reason she wants to learn how to make lemon chiffon pie. Now, what kind of a riddle diddle answer is that? Jumping Jehoshaphat. Now, Mike. Jerry back from bowling yet, Mother? You look stunning, dear. Thank you. Although I think if I were you, I'd subdue the mascara and the lipstick a little. Well, you think so, Mother? Mm -hmm. And the hair, dear, you should brush it away from your face. It'll look much more chic that way. And do it now, Ginny, quickly. All right, Mother. What in thunder made her get herself up like that? Not what, dear? Who? Listen, woman. Don't talk to me in riddles. Why is she in that get-up? Now, calm down, dear. That get-up is another classic symptom of Ginny's state of mind. Like, wanted to learn how to make lemon chiffon pies. Cutting herself off from all our contemporaries. Our daughter has her first big crush on someone. What? Where are you going, Mike? I'm going to find that somebody and wring his neck. Now, don't be silly. In the first place, we don't even know who it is. It's easy enough to find out. I'll ask her. No, you'll do no such thing. Well, what are we going to do? Nothing. Except wait. Could I see you for a second? I've got something terribly important to ask you. Uh, sit down, Dad, please. <clears throat> I want you to help me. 
Friday's Jerry's birthday, remember? Yeah. Now that you mention it. What about it? Well, I want to give him a surprise birthday party. You do? And uh, did you talk to your mother about it? Well, no. I thought I'd talk to you first. I get it. You need some extra money for ice cream and stuff. I can donate a few bucks. Oh, I don't need the money, Dad. Well, I've got plenty of money from working after school. Anyway, I'm not going to have a lot of icky ice cream. I'll have a cake, ham, beer. Beer? Well, sure. I'm going to invite all Jerry's friends. And that's what I want you to do for me. I want you to ask all Jerry's friends down at CNA. You're having an adult party. Of course. Well, honey, I'll have to think it over. And I'll talk to your mother about it. Mary, what's she going to think of next? She wants to give Jerry a surprise birthday party. An adult party with beer yet. Yeah, she wants me to invite all his friends from CNA. Oh. Oh. What kind of reaction is that? Well, don't you see? The mystery's solved. Jenny's big crush is Jerry. What? Now, don't blow a gasket, darling. I'm sure he's as unaware of it as you were until a second ago. Let me think. First things first. I'll have a talk with Jenny. And for the time being, don't say anything to Jerry. What a game. Boy, was I in the groove. Six strikes in the... Well, what's the matter? Uh, I'm son. Your father tells me you want to give a party for Jerry. That's right, Mom. Are you in love with them, dear? Yes, I am. And he's in love with me. Oh? How do you know? Well, he calls me princess. And he kissed me. He did? Oh, yes, when he learned about the watch. Ginny, dear, well, that was a... Well, kind of a big brother thing. That doesn't mean he's in love with you. Not in the real sense. Well, yes, it does. I can tell. And anyway, suppose he didn't quite mean it. No man really knows when he's in love. It's up to the woman to convince him. It's, well, it's like a campaign. And I'll have a campaign. And the opening gun will be this party. And after that, there'll be dates and lots of talks. And, well, you'll see. Finally, he'll pop the question. Jenny, I'm sorry. There isn't going to be a party. Well, you're too young to be hostess to a group of adults. Of course, if you want to invite your own high school friends. Oh, Mother, I'm not interested in that bunch of immature children. I know. I'll have a dinner party. Uh, just a family affair. And after Butch goes to bed, we can dance and have beer and stuff. Just the four of us. Will you attend? I wouldn't miss it. Well? She's gone, Mike. Really gone. She's not only convinced she's in love with Jerry, but she's sure he's in love with her. Am I interrupting, sir? Jerry... Jenny's thinking of giving you a party. Oh, yeah, I know. She just invited me. The four of us. We'll have a ball. Uh, do you know why she's giving you the party? Mm hmm Because it's my birthday. That's just part of it, boy. It's because she's in love with you. Well, it's normal. In love? Jenny? 
but she's just... Good grief. What are we going to do? Pappy? I... I mean Mike. I've been thinking. Maybe the answer's for me to leave. That's no answer. Jenny would think Mary and I threw you out. We'd be the villains. Yeah, you're right. Indifference. Hmm? Well, I've never known of a gal who'd carry a torch for a guy who's indifferent to her. It sounds reasonable, but how would it work with Jenny? Well, what time does the party start tomorrow night? Six o'clock. Okay. So I show up an hour late. When I do show up, I play it cool with Ginny. And pretty soon, she's wishing for a guy her own age who will pay her some attention. I'm an old idiot like me. I don't know. That still makes you look like kind of a villain. Well, what's the alternative? If I tell her face to face she's wasting her time, and, and I'm a complete villain. And she'll have a broken heart. It might work. I'll tip Mary off. We're going to be an hour late for the party tomorrow night. We better let her in on it. Why do you have to be late? My problem, too. She's my daughter. Well, Harry, we've got problems. The like of which I wouldn't wish even on you. Well, I'm sorry, boys. You're going to have to take them out of here. I'm locking up for the night. CNA tracking? Yeah. Hold it a minute, fellas. Yeah? At Brampton? Wait a minute. You fellas are at loose ends. How'd you like to take the tractor out to Brampton? Manning and Stewart broke down there and they got a load of flour at you at Toronto Millings tonight. Brampton? Well, let's see. There and back, it's about two hours. That's just about how much time we want to kill. Yeah, we'll do it. Malone and Austin are on their way. There's the rig. Hmm. Well, how you, Manning? Hey, Cannonball. Hey, you must have burned up the road to get here. Sure. Jerry and me start somewhere. We get there. Unlike some people I know. What happened to you? Oh, transmission conked out. All I got left is low gear. One mile an hour. Where's your sidekick? Stuart! Oh, he hitched into Brampton to get some coffee and... How long ago did he leave? Oh, about five minutes. Should be back in about half an hour. The least he could have done was help you uncouple before he took off. Rev her up, Manning. I'll do it. Don't know what the all-fired rush is. Well, how about that? Stu was wheeling when we cocked out. I guess he stuck it in his pocket automatic leg. <laughs> That's what in his pocket? The ignition key. Oh, that's some joke. We'll have to go in for him. Say, I think I'll go along. I'd like a cup of hot coffee. Go ahead, I'll wait. I'll call Mary. I'll see how things are. Hello? Oh, yes, Mike. Well, she's in the kitchen. Very anxious. Well, she's beginning to think you and Jerry aren't coming at all. Yeah? Well, with any luck, we should get in by 7.15. The job we took. I'll tell you all about it when we get there. Yeah, honey. Goodbye. Hey, Cannibal. He left about 10 minutes ago. Capex driver gave him a lift. We must have passed him on the way in. Hey, how about a hot cup of coffee? No. Where are you two guys then? I ought to flatten you, Stu. Taking off with that key? All right, all right. We're happy for some again. Let's get things rolling. It's gonna be dark. Uh, hook up 18. Let's get out of here. Mike? 
call Mary? Yeah. Jenny's afraid we're not going to make it back at all. Well, we don't want that to happen. No. Well, we can still make it by quarter after seven. Wait a minute. Get down out of that cab. We're hauling the slow to Toronto. Oh, no, Austin. You're gonna wait here with that other tractor until the breakdown truck shows up? Well, you wait for him. That tractor's been signed out to you and Stewart. Well, that may well be, friend. But Stu's and my name appear on the way bill for the flour in this truck. It's our responsibility to see that it's safely delivered to the mill. And it's our responsibility for tractor number 18. You gotta get out of that cab. No. I'll get you out. Hey, cut it out. Take a walk. Cool off. Manning, the only way to settle this is to call Harry Butler. Butler won't be at the office. I've got his home phone number. Now, will you abide by whatever Harry Butler says? Okay. Do it. You and Jerry go into town and call Harry. Hello, Mary. Jerry. What's the latest? Oh, pretty bad, Jerry. She's up in her room, crying. I don't know what to do. Well, frankly, neither do I. Look, we ought to be home in an hour, maybe less. I'll call you again after we talk to Butler. Right. It's all yours, Stu. So after Stu called Butler and I talked to him and got nowhere, I called Mary back. Yeah? Yeah, she said something very funny happened. Jenny called Mary Rickard in the phone. Mary couldn't hear what they were talking about. She said that Jenny seemed very happy about it all. Hey, Cannonball! Give her regards to the breakdown crew! Mike, what are we going to tell Ginny when we see her? I don't know. One thing is sure. we got all the time in the world to think about it. idea. I better let her tell you. Jenny! Jenny! Hi, Dad. Hi, Jerry. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks, but, but I thought that... Oh, I changed my mind. Adults are too stuffy. They've got too many problems. Anyway, they never show up on time. Oh, we saved us some cake. When you get cleaned up, come on in. Well, happy birthday, Jerry. Uh, hey, hey, none of that. One in the families are now. <laughs> Yeah. 